Hi, I'm Semir Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Absolute Maximum Ratings, and this is part one operational amplifier. Let me say a few words about the background here. Absolute maximum rating is an important set of parameters that is given in data sheets of all electronic components. This presentation explains how to interpret these limitations and how they affect the circuit design. The video covers absolute maximum ratings of operational amplifier. Hopefully in the forthcoming videos, I'll cover other devices. Here is an example of a absolute maximum rating table. This is for a operational amplifier by Texas Instrument, TLV237 family. These are the parameters. And let me start off with a suggestion. Always look at the footnotes. All these tables do have footnotes. And these footnotes, as it turns out, are very, very important. So let's see what are the footnotes in this particular case of this operation amplifier. And you see it's divided into voltage, current, and temperature sections. So let's see, what is the footnote one? It says stresses beyond those listed under absolute maximum rating may cause permanent damage to the device. These are stress ratings only which do not imply functional operation of the device at these or any other condition beyond those indicated under recommended operating condition. So this is very important. These are not operating point parameters. These are values that you should not exceed in order not to damage the unit. Now the damage could be immediate or as it says here, exposure to absolute maximum rated condition for extended period may affect device reliability. That is, you may harm the device and then in, in after some time you'll, it'll deteriorate and break down and malfunction. So this is very, very important. Another footnote here too is all voltage values except differential voltage are with respect to ground. Well, what does it mean? It means that they are referring to a configuration which is a single supply, okay? So that you have at the minus side of the supply the ground and then you have VDD. Now this is not mandatory. You can operate the operation amplifier with a uh, bipolar power supply plus and minus and the value that you have here, supply voltage maximum 16 volt, it's just the maximum voltage between these two, okay? Now it is important also to realize that it is not just the voltage that is coming from say a auxiliary power supply. There are situations in which, for example, uh, you're driving a inductive load. If the current goes this direction, then either with a diode that you are putting for protection or an internal diode, current may flow here and increase the voltage. So it's not just the power supply voltage coming in, but the voltage that is actually building up due to this current, and it could be actually coming from the input. Again, this could be a protection diode or an internal diode. So one has to be careful not to exceed this maximum of 16 volt. And if there is a problem, then you have to put a Zener diode or some other absorber because power supply, auxiliary power supply cannot absorb energy. They can only deliver current. So if a current now is coming from this direction, it'll build up the voltage. Now the next parameter that I'm considering here is the input voltage. We see that the input voltage for this particular device is from minus 0.2 volt to VDD plus 0.2 volt. That is ground and VDD plus 0.2. So what is this 0.2? Now here is a functional block diagram of this particular amplifier. Now we see that this is a MOS type operational amplifier. The transistor are MOSFETs. And there's, it's not obvious why there be this uh, 0 0.2 uh, limitation here. Well, this uh, either it'll be say lower than VDD or maybe higher. Why is it the 0.2? Well, the point two is coming from the fact that in most operational amplifiers, and in fact uh, analog de uh, devices, there is a protection diode at the input. 
Now, these diodes are against ESD, electrostatic uh, discharge, and they are protecting the input from breakdown of this uh, MOSFET or MOS transistor. So, there is a diode here, and usually there is also a diode in this direction. So, when you have a voltage coming in here, and if the voltage, say, on, on this side here will be more negative than ground, then the diode will start conducting. And then there is a limit to this current. And if the current will exceed a certain value, in fact, it is here, 10 milliamp, the diode can be damaged. So the limitation is really not voltage, it is the current of the diode. So if you have a voltage which is more negative than 0.2, like minus one volt, if you put a resistor here, that will limit the current to be, say, 10 milliamp or below 10 milliamp, then you are okay. So the actual limitation is the current of the diode, the two diodes, this diode and this diode. Now, as it turns out, the limitation of minus 0.2, refer to ground, is actually very important because there are some cases in which you would like to work with reference to ground. I'm giving here an example of a nonlinear circuit, but it could be also a linear circuit, in which you like to work around the ground. For here, I have a comparator, which is comparing this signal to ground, to zero, and therefore you need the operation amplifier to work properly when the voltage is around ground, okay? So it is important to have some leeway here, so some extra voltage below ground, that is minus, so that around ground, you'll have here, you'll have a good response. So this is very important. So we can see that some amplifiers, for example, microchip amplifier, this particular one, has a minus one to plus one volt band which is very good, okay? So you can work around the ground safely. Not only that, this particular manufacturer gives us more information, which is very important when you like to work around the ground potential. For example, first of all, it shows the input offset voltage around zero, okay? So this is the voltage, this is the common mode voltage. This is the voltage of the two inputs. Of course, in operation amplifier in a linear mode, uh, the voltage between the input is very small. It's like the offset. So it shows here what is the input offset voltage as a function of the common mode voltage of the inputs. And you see that they give you information about the negative values here, that is below zero. And you can see that up to minus 0.2, it's pretty good. So you can actually work nicely around zero. Not only that, this particular manufacturer gives us some more very important information, and that is the current, okay, let me go back. That is the current that you will have in this case when you are going negative. And here it is, you see that as you go negative, the current of the diode starts to build up, depending on the temperature, of course, because the voltage across the diode is dependent on temperature. So say at 25 degree, which is uh, this one, you see that it starts to go up as you go more and more negative. And say at uh, 0.5 volt, it is one microamp. Well, my, one microamp is not too bad, but you have to take it into account if the impedance of the, of the input is very high, then this could be significant. But anyhow, this is a very important information if indeed you like to work around zero. Now, Texas Instrument gives us also something similar, although it doesn't have this uh, plot of the current, but it gives us the offset as a function of the common mode. But as you see, they don't give any information about the negative voltages, okay? So it's only positive. Of course, it could be okay, I don't know, but uh, in my opinion, if there's no clear information about it, you cannot rely on it, and 
It's not a good idea to start testing amplifier if they are good or bad. You need data sheets which will give you clear information which is backed up by the manufacturer. Let me move now to the differential input voltage. Now, the differential input voltage is the voltages between the input. Now, again, in a linear circuit, it's almost zero, like the offset. But in nonlinear circuit, like, uh, for example, the comparator that I've shown earlier, or some other circuit, or during transient, you may have high voltages here. And of course, this is in addition to the restriction of the voltage between the input and VDD and ground. Okay, so this is just between these two. Now, in, for this particular amp amplifier, you see that you can go the full range, that is plus minus VDD between these uh, inputs. But you should be aware that there are some amplifiers that do have back-to-back -back diodes at the input. I'm talking about internal diodes. Sometimes you put it yourself, but this is the case that I'm talking about is in a case that you have in the amplifier back-to-back -back diode for protection in, in the case that the first stage is sensitive, then you have to worry about, again, about the current that will flow if you exceed the voltage of the diode when it starts to conduct. I'm moving now to the output current. Now, these absolute maximum ratings obviously are limits that you should never exceed. However, there are some other limits which are not shown here, and this I'm going to actually demonstrate by considering this output current limitation, which is plus minus 100 million. Now, output current could be in various conditions. You can have a current going to ground, okay, this will be the outgoing current, sourcing, and then it could be a sinking current, but there is also very important uh, cases in which you have a short either to ground or to VDD. Some data sheet give in the absolute maximum rating information about that, that will tell you what will happen if you have a short to the ground. Unfortunately, Texas Instrument does not give you any information on that, only that the maximum is plus minus 100 million. If I look at the microchip data sheet again, you see that they are saying that output short circuit current continue. Very important. That is, if due to uh, testing or malfunction there is a short to ground, then the unit is protected. This will be because they, they obviously have a current limiter at the high side. So this is a very important parameter, which unfortunately we don't have it in the Texas Instrument data. Although Texas Instrument does not have this piece of information in the absolute maximum ratings of their operation amplifier, we can infer about this issue by looking at some other data in the data sheet. So this is again some pieces from the Texas Instrument data sheet of this operation amplifier. What they are showing here is the output voltage as a function of the load. And this, is, this will be, in this particular case, for the outgoing current. That is, you have an outgoing current, and this causes a voltage drop here, and you see the voltage, the remaining voltage shown here. That is, as you increase the current, increase the current, the, the drop becomes larger and larger, and the output voltage, of course, becomes lower and lower. And this line here is when you have actually a short. When you have a short here, then the voltage is zero of the output, so that all the voltage actually drops on the operation amplifier. And these are the currents that you'll get for different temperature. So we can see that in this particular case, if you have a short, the current will not reach 100 milliamp. That's okay. No problem in that. But if the power supply VDD is 15 volt, this is this graph here, this is again the short circuit. You see that if you have a short circuit, the current will be much higher than the limit of 100 milliamp, so you have a problem here. So in this case, you are limited to this range, that is, 
to output voltages which are higher than the, the short. And this, of course, depends on the ambient temperature. Now, if we take the case of 15 volt with a limit of 100 milliamp and say 25, it's about 10 volt output, which means that the difference between VDD and output is 5 volt, that is the drop on the device, and 100 milliamp, you have 0.5 watt dissipation. So now we can look at another piece of information, and that is the maximum power dissipation allowed not to exceed the junction temperature of 150 degree. Okay, now these curves are for different packages. This one is for a dual inline package, and this one is for a SOIC package. Now the difference primarily in this respect here is the thermal resistance. Now they are showing here the thermal resistance between junction and ambient. Now these devices are tested on a PCB, on a board of a given size, it's a, like a standard test. They don't give the information of the size and the board and the copper, free copper space in the data sheet, but you can actually find it. But here is a, just a comparison between the different packages. And now, coming to our problem, we have a dissipation of 0.5 Watt. This is 0.5 Watt. And what we see is the following. For the smallest size, this is the smallest size, it's not 23, you can sustain a power dissipation of 0.5 Watt if the ambient temperature will be minus 23 degree. That's not realistic, of course. Now for the next size here, this one, you can sustain the current at a maximum temperature, ambient temperature of say 55 degree, which is okay. So this seems to be a good point. So it means that in the case of this package, 100 milliamp, you can carry the 100 milliamp continuously and then you'll just be about at the junction temperature of 150 degrees. So what we see is that the 100 milliamp is, of course, a limit that you should not exceed according to the data sheet given, but it's, it's not the whole story. That is, it doesn't mean that you can have 100 milliamp continuously, and in some cases, it's rather limited. Now, what about the case of 5 volt? If you have a maximum current of 32 milliamp, this is 25 degrees, then the power dissipate, you have about 150 milliwatt, and this is the line of about 150 milliwatt. And you can see that in this particular case, for 5 volt, you can have a short because the current is limited. Currents will not build up higher than that according to the data sheet. And therefore, for all the given uh, packages here, you can actually run it continuously if the ambient temperature will not be above uh, I don't know, 90 degrees, which is okay. So the point that I'm making is there is a lot of information that you have to consider above and beyond the absolute maximum ratings of the table. Because there is, say, the 100 milliamp limit on one hand, but you can see that you cannot run it continuously. So this is something that you have to explore in each data sheet with all the other information given there. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.